everyone, welcome to Brickball. Today is another LEGO Weekly News Update. Lots of things happened in the world of LEGO this week. Uh, there's some reveals. LEGO Creator Modular Expert Set. I'll have a review out for this on Monday. Uh, just We literally just got it uh, delivered not that long ago. Uh, also, there is uh, the DC Collectible Minifigure Series. Official pictures are out, so we have uh, we can now talk about those. Uh, also, there was an interesting LEGO Christmas employee set. Uh, which I know has a huge amount of buzz around it, I would say. And lots of little things. It's actually a pretty packed episode, but before I jump into any of the stories of this last week in LEGO, what did we put up in our web store? So this week was the 1 in 200th scale Fletcher class destroyer designed by my brother. It comes in two different display uh, options, and there's a really fun building technique used to get that deck to slowly but surely curve upward towards the front. Any and all support from you guys buying instructions from us is a great way to help support what we do here at the channel. Of course, there's a link in the description below, www.brickfault.toys, and I highly recommend that you check out some of the cool other awesome creations that are on the web store as well. We're getting close to about a hundred different unique designs and hint hint nudge nudge next week we are working on a design that is the single biggest build that we've ever put up in the web store at least in terms of parts so we're having a blast doing it not slowing down check out the web store in the description and let's move on to what i think is the primary story of the week or at least i think i'm the most interested in this it's the dc collectible minifigure series pictures have officially been revealed i know leaked pictures have been floating around for quite a while i found the articles at alan train at the brickfan.com but the original sources came from a Japanese online shop. And then a little later, the minifigure store in the UK had some different graphics as well. So let's go through the list and check out the pictures. This first one here is Aquaman. I haven't done the research for which comic he appears in, but I am familiar with the comic book artwork that he is based on. Love the new blonde hairpiece that's used here. His hook hand is a special mold, which I love. That's definitely gonna come in handy later down the line. And the weird fish piece, I don't know. I don't know about that. That's definitely an odd accessory. Maybe it's from the comics. I don't know. But this one I'm excited about. Batman's first appearance. The cowl is molded in this weird way that uh, mimics, I think, a bit closer to what his original cowl looked like in the comics. His batarang comes in blue, which is kind of cool. He's got purple hands, and the rope that he swings from is in black, which maybe it exists. Maybe that piece exists in black, but I'm not totally sure. This will be great for the collection, uh, along with Batmite here. It's from a smaller comic series. He's got the original Detective Comics Batman also, which is great, which is I think Batman first appearance. So that'll be awesome getting both of these guys back to back. He's got the short legs. His cowl has the little bent over uh, little bat ear. And he looks very goofy and cartoony, which is pretty much characteristic of this guy. Teen Titans Bumblebee looks about exactly how I think a lot of people may have imagined her. Great molded hairpiece. I like that those electrical pieces now come in trans yellow. And I think that's a print that goes on those wings. That's not a new mold for the wings, but I'm not sure if we've gotten them in trans clear before. I do remember them in like trans orange from uh, not that long ago. Anyways, decent fig. And now we're looking at Teen Titans Cyborg. The mold for his head by far is my favorite bit, but the dual molded arms with the printing on the side uh, really makes this guy a very extra detailed character. I don't believe his legs are dual molded. Maybe they are. That's just printing on the sides. Kind of hard to tell, but I don't think you can see uh, the dual molding on the inside of the leg there. And I'm not really a huge fan of the cyborg character, but I definitely can appreciate the extra effort that went into the creation of this particular guy. Now here's another blast from the past. We have Jay Garrick Flash. I think this is his first appearance. He looks like the really classic old school guy. Great mold. This is something that I know a lot of people were really looking forward to for his helmet. And the neck bracket with the yellow lightning pieces is simple, but super fitting. He's got dual molded legs, awesome little prints on the little sides for his boots. Boots, and I probably put him in my top three or top five uh, looking forward to for this collection. Next up is the Simon Baz Green Lantern. I think that is a new mold for a lantern. And it's a nice little effect showing the print for the single round trans green tile for the green lantern symbol. He feels slightly more simple than a lot of the other guys because he doesn't have a special piece for his head. 
but the dual molded legs look good. And then I didn't even know who Huntress was until this list had leaked a little bit earlier, but she is looking like a pretty solid fig for sure. She's got a utility belt, dual molded legs, printing on the just the upper part of the shoulders, which I think looks really nice. And all in all, just a good color combination for this character. I always thought Metamorpho looked weird as a, as a character. He just didn't make sense as a villain, just like the way he morphs into different things or his, different, his body has different uh, elemental capacities. But he does make for an eye-catching figure. That is, that is for sure. Mr. Miracle has my favorite color combination just for a superhero. The bright green, bright yellow, bright red really, really catches uh, your eye. And I like that he came with the chains too and the, and the handcuff pieces. Now, Classic Cheetah was definitely an interesting choice when it comes to a collectible figure. And this character gets points just because of all of those uh, cheetah spots that you see everywhere along the body of this figure. The mold looks kind of funny, to be honest, but I mean, that is kind of what Classic Cheetah looked like. And is it me, but does LEGO really like making cat suit minifigures? I feel like there's a few now. The colored green money bag is a nice little change up though. And then who doesn't like another version of the Joker? I can't say that I know exactly which universe this white suited Joker comes from, but he's definitely an interesting change up. I like the print that he has for that Joker card in his hand. The Widow's Peak in lime green looks pretty darn good. And Cotton Candy is an interesting extra accessory for sure. Classic Sinestro looks cool. He was never my favorite supervillain, but it looks like they did him justice. And then Stargirl's not too bad. It would have been cool if she came with a utility belt in red. You can see the print almost, I mean, it's pretty darn close to what the uh, other utility belt looks like. So it would have been cool if that was an actual molded piece. But the stars along the sides of the arms are good. The molding and printing for the legs is uh, very, very detailed. You can see it goes right along uh, the edge of the uh, the rounded bit of the leg there. Here is Rebirth Superman, not gonna lie. Uh, I don't see a whole lot of extra special coolness going on with him. The shading for the muscles on the outside is better than what you would get from a standard print. And outside of that, he is by far the least detailed and probably lowest effort character in this lineup. He's Superman at the end of the day. He comes with a little daily planet print, and I guess you couldn't not include him, but he's definitely not the coolest. And then we've got the 1966 Wonder Woman, which looks really nice. The skirt piece looks awesome with all those star prints. The molding for the legs is great, and I appreciate the details of those little curls of hair uh, when you get to the ends. This animated picture is definitely weird because you can see the lasso of truth is clearly clipping through the digital render. But anyways, that's uh, what the DC Collectible series is going to look like for 2020. There is a rumor that each of them are going to sell for five bucks each, and I think they will be available January 1st, 2020, or somewhere close to there. Now, moving along, LEGO has announced their next modular creator set. It is the Bookshop, set number 10270. It's going to sell for 180 in the States, 150 pounds in the UK, and 160 euro. At 2,500 pieces, generally speaking, creator sets, the modular creator sets, are always pretty good bang for the buck and this set is designed in a way to break apart just like uh, the pet shop and the other thing from a few years ago so it's half a bookshop and half a modular townhouse personally I'm really liking all the details that I see from the pictures and just before I started recording I mean just before I started recording we got our set sent to us from Lego. So thanks a lot guys for sending this over. We will have a review out for this, I think on Monday after I build it this weekend. I won't go into any further details about this, but Lego has also shown off their designer video for it. I really like some of the Easter eggs that the designer has put into this build. And if you haven't seen it, those kinds of videos are actually pretty well worth a watch, at least in my opinion. Let me know what you guys think about this modular creator set in the comments below. Generally, I think they do a pretty darn good job, but for some reason it always feels like the modular creator sets get a higher level of scrutiny and I think that's just because the quality of each build is so high that people are always like really really into uh, getting the exact type of modular building that they want. I thought they were going to go a different route this year, but now that you know what's coming out, I'd like to know what you guys think, what you want to come out for next year. Then this next thing is by far the biggest uh, reveal slash, I think, upset for a lot of people. Personally, I'm pretty excited that LEGO decided to make such an ambitious employee gift. Several sources have shown off pictures kind of from all over the place for this one, and the employee gift is pretty interesting. It's a very ambitious one. We've got a Christmas-themed X-Wing 
building. There is a Santa Yoda fig, as well as a Yuletide Squadron pilot, which is basically a fighter pilot version of Santa. There's no other way to describe them. But usually they don't include like any exclusive figures, and they definitely haven't gone with uh, any giant licenses like Star Wars before. So this is really, really unique. As collectors, we definitely want to get that pilot and Yoda. But of course, they will be very expensive on the secondhand market, which is I'm sure where a lot of that criticism is going to be directed. And honestly, the, the X-Wing looks pretty darn good too with the candy cane, uh, the candy cane blasters on the sides. Congrats to any employees that get this. I mean, if you're working for Lego right now, you're probably pretty stoked to get a cool set like this. And for hardcore collectors, this might be a slightly more painful thing to get your hands on, or maybe some people will skip it because I have a feeling it's going to go pretty high in the aftermarkets. I think it's a cool set regardless. It's going to suck for us to buy it secondhand, and I don't even have to ask for your opinion in the comments below because I have a feeling that's what this whole video is going to be about. Anyways, let's move on to the official picks of the 2020 Brickhead sets. We already basically got to see what they looked like. These are just the slightly higher res, slightly better looking pictures. The Valentine's Day teddy bear is great looking, and you can also see the little sheep and good luck cat or the lucky cat. Those ones are awesome, but I honestly think the bride and groom Brickhead sets are a really, really good idea. I like that they included several different skin tones and hair colors, and outside of that, people can add funny little things to uh, each of the Brickhead's characters for really customizing Lego builds for the bride and groom at a wedding party. I have a feeling these will be very popular uh, amongst people who are having friends that get married. <laughs> There's always a season for that, really. And anyways, I think they definitely look good because they come with a lot of extra pieces compared to a classic Brickhead's, and they're still priced in a very reasonable way. I'm not waiting to the end of the episode to start talking about ideas. The builder, Ad Wind, just became a member of the 10,000 Club with his design, Home Alone, McAllister's House. So once again, we have an idea set based on another classic movie franchise, this one being Home Alone, and this is where he sets up all the booby traps for the robbers. So you've got Macaulay Culkin, the character, and the fully fleshed out interior. I mean, this is a rather large build, and I have a feeling that he managed to uh, get quite a few of the accurate details in here. And of course, there are actual spots to set up little booby traps for the would-be thieves. Definitely an ambitious design. I'm very curious to see how this goes over. And then very quickly, we're jumping over to Legoland, California. They are going to be displaying that giant life-size Technic Bugatti Chiron. In fact, uh, I think it's on display already for a limited time only. We don't know how long, but anyways, if you're in the area there, it's where you can see it. And if you were thinking about getting the 1989 Batmobile gift with purchase or the Christmas tree, Tree, they are both out of stock right now and probably will remain so. That's usually how promotional gifts work. They're already selling for, I think, quite a bit on the aftermarket. But I bet you if you bricked link the pieces for the Batmobile, it might not be that much. I don't really know. The building instructions can be found. I've left a link for that and links to all the articles that I talk about in the description below. So if you wanted to build the Batmobile, you still can. You just won't get that box. Lego tweeted out a celebration of 10 years of Winter Village sets, which is kind of cool. We made a fun little video. And they've also announced that they are switching uh, from plastic bags to all paper, it seems. This makes sense. Lego Group has been on top of their uh, green platform for quite a while, and that includes making their green plant pieces out of a type of polymer that is, I think, grown from sugarcane, if I'm not mistaken. But anyways, they're switching over to paper, and when I'm talking about bags, I do want to say that there is a rumor the Lego Masters show may have a mid-December promo uh, reusable bag with, like, the Lego Masters logo. Not totally totally sure if that's going to be a thing. And I was surfing through Lego Reddit today and I saw this amazing picture of Baby Yoda and then I looked at who submitted it. It's from Hachiroku24, really great designer. And anyways, just a link to that pic I've also put in the description below. All right, that's going to be it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, top 10 locks of the week is tomorrow. If you enjoy our content, you can always like or subscribe. And we'll see you next time at Brickfall. I'm going to go build this.